are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, seek his help, and ask him for forgiveness. We place our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all the evil in our soul and from all our wrong actions. Whoever Allah misguides, no one can guide. I testify, there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one having no partner. And I testify that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and give him peace with his family companion. Verily, the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dearest congregation, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have just passed a few minutes or a few minutes of a brand new year. And it's always common for us to have new goals to achieve or what is known as resolution or new year's re re resolution. We have like half an hour to talk. I was given as a title today or tonight as put your trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فإذا أزمت فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين Surah Al-Imran verse 159 which means and when you have decided then rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed Allah love those who rely upon him like what I mentioned just now the short period between two important salah بَيْنَ maghrib wal isha, or in between maghrib and isha we are touching on this title put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is in, in conjunction with Ma'al Hijrah, like what I mentioned just now also, which is the brand new year, which is 1440 Hijriah. In the surah that I just read just now, Tawakkal is an understanding of trust that we put to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a small word that I'm very sure that we cannot define that in this half an hour or so that, was, that is given to me. It has a strong significance for every single Muslim. Again here, tawakkal is trust. And the word tawakkal itself does not really mean you hang or you put your trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's it. Abu Hassan al-Shadli, a great scholar, a great Sufi, by the name of Abdullah bin Abdul Jabbar al-Shadli, Tariqa Hashadli, he is the Murshid. And Tariqa Ba'alwi also follow part of Imam Ashadli or, 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 or he is well known as Abu Hassan Ashadli. He mentioned in his book, Risalatul Amin, in conjunction or when he speaks about Atawakkal, he says, in order to make Tawakkal alive in us, he did not mention about tawakkal, or he did not mention, or he did not explain about what is the meaning of tawakkal. He says, if you want to keep tawakkal alive in your heart, then have these three things. He mentioned, abstain from his worldly desire. A person must abstain from his worldly desires. One. Two. Forget about human being. Three. To breach the grip to breach the gap between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, here I mentioned, he did not define the word tawakkal. But he says, if you want to keep tawakkal alive in your heart, then place these three things. Again, I repeat, he says, abstain from worldly affairs or desires. How does this link to tawakkal here? I'm going to explain a bit more. Forget about human being. Let's go for the first one first. Abstain from his worldly desires. A person who wants to keep tawakkal alive in his heart or in, in your heart, then you abstain from worldly desires. Now, we understand that tawakkal has got to do with trust. And what, is, what has it got to do with abstaining or leaving behind the desires? Because when one 
want to keep alive tawakal inside him. He would want to know that he has lived every single goodness or all affairs that make him happy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to eat some food, this is the simplest form of worldly desire. If you crave for a certain fruit, food, maybe some kind of nasi lemak or what is, I just come across crave. That's why you, you guys know, right? Crave? Okay. So, when you crave for a certain food, say nasi lemak, for instance, you want to eat. That is the worldly desire that we are looking at. And we are linking this with tawakkal, as Imam Abu Hassan mentioned here. Because when you want to abstain for the sake of Allah, because you know Allah knows what's the best for you. And this has got to do, this is, this is not complicated, this is not complicated, complicated at all. You need to understand the word tawakkal comes in with regards to yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have given upon all the trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you yourself do not know what's the best for you. You yourself do not know what's the best for you. You just seem to like nasi lemak. You crave for that food. But you do not know that has got to do with desire, with your desire or something that Allah wants it to be the best for you. Again here, this is a long homework. First, like what I said here, he says, leave the affair, abstain from worldly desires because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you have tawakkal. Again here, I want to make you all, you all understand that this is coming from a perspective of a Sufi, a person like what I mentioned just now, Abu Hassan Ashadli, is no doubt a scholar. He lives about a thousand years back. He, he, he He's more older than Imam Ghazali. So the fact that he explained um, tawakkal, not practically from defining it, but exactly making you understand to keep tawakkal alive, you have to abstain from the worldly desire because the worldly desire has got to do with the trust within you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second one, forget about human beings. Most of us have this, but it's a comma. When you feel that you are in total power, or it's your ego that is talking, you say, I don't care about him. I do not know. Someone just want to place fear inside you, and you mention this word. I don't care about him. Who bothers about him? Imam Abu Hassan Ashadri mentioned here, he says, tawakkal and keeping it alive is when you don't bother about human being. You don't bother about human being. And this is what it is mentioned here. Most of us have this. They have no fear for nobody. But they forget. They, do not, they did not put a comma there. It's just a full stop. I don't care about him. Who scares him? Oh, I'm not scared about him. Whoever that is trying to put fear inside you, maybe your boss, maybe your friend, I don't care about him. That is not practically the tawakkal that we are looking at. We are looking at, I don't care about him. All I care is about Allah. Whether or not Allah is angry with me, whether or not Allah is not happy with me, has, has placed some kind of non-mercy to me, that one would... would, would would place fear in me. Other than that, I don't care. Again here, this statement is vague. You need to understand and purely understand. If you say that statement, I don't care about him, you have to have a comma down there and place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the highest top form. When I say this, I'm going to put some example inside it. I hope to share with you two stories inside what Abu Hassan al-Shadhali mentioned here on the three perspectives of keeping alive tawakkal inside you. I'm going to relate two stories, very probably familiar to you, but this would be in relation with tawakkal. The third one, to bridge the gap between one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by dhikrullah. By dhikr. 
yakni acts of remembrance that is zikir you have allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every single second inside you when you have that you hang yourself you put your trust to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every single affairs of yours this includes anything everything not assuming just a bit but everything and let allah subhanahu wa ta'ala handles that that is tawakkal that is submission that is islam that is difficult yes you need to strive to do it you need to strive to do it and that's how those that are close to allah in fact the closest to allah he is known as khalilullah khalilullah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a khalilullah a friend a very close friend a very very close friend that is our prophet ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam this is one story that i'm going to relate to you and i'm going to make you understand the meaning of trust the meaning of rely the meaning on something that you put yourself your everything as you must start from now if you have not it's a great waste because all the scholars all the prophets they win the heart i put in inverted commas they win the heart of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by showing tawakkal we have to win the heart of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm not mentioning at all that allah has heart but you have to have that eye that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look upon you that you have his trust and that is a sincere trust not mainly by saying tawakkal ala allah but you do not really practice what is the meaning of tawakkal as per mention here as one perspective mentioned here as in what i mentioned just now as abu hasan ashadli mentioned that three thing to keep that alive coming back to the story that i'm going to relate which is prophet ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam i begin the story with an ayah in al quran that he mentioned بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فنظر نظرة في نجومي فقال اني سقيم you can see in this ayah surah ibrahim mentioned here then he cast a glance at the stars and he said verily i'm sick this is what prophet ibrahim says when a festival was about to happen in his village then he says he look up and says verily i'm very sick so what he's trying to say here ulama at tafsir mentioned that he says that because he do not want to join the others to go to another village as that is a custom that is a festival that is going on where he would they would go the whole village will go out they will go and visit another place but that period of time ibrahim says no i'm not going i'm sick leave me behind so everybody leave everybody left the village he left ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam inside that village and what he did was something which is beyond our imagination he broke or he breaks all the idols that was around him he go and take a big axe break every single idol that is in his kampung and then he take that big ass x he put at the biggest statue at the biggest idol and he rest until everybody come back and then ask who did all this who did all this who breaks all these idols and then ibrahim say look at the biggest one he is holding the x maybe he is the one that breaks the others he is trying to crack a joke no he is trying to make some knowledge or put some knowledge inside the other villagers that he, what he wants to say is that they definitely going to ask this is a statue i'm very sure that he cannot do anything and that is the message of course the message is ibrahim is trying to tell everybody that statue cannot bring any harm nor benefits but again they are very angry because ibrahim has broke all the statues around so they brought him to justice they brought him to namrud worst of all namrud call himself not only a king 
but a God's head. God's head. He, he himself wants to be called God. Namrud, a king. So he brought to justice, and then Ibrahim explained the whole thing again, and of course everybody got very angry again. Namrud got very, very angry. So he instruct all villagers, poor and rich, to gather all woods around, and they gather that for a month or so, just to get woods, so that they can burn Ibrahim inside alive. That's what they did. They, they gather every single wood that they can find everywhere. And they gather it for months. Can you imagine how much wood they can find? And they put into one very big plot of land and they start burning it. And when the fire really raised up, they made a special catapult for uh, Ibrahim. They tie him. Tie him together. That was the first engineering that happens. In this whole wide world, catapult. You know what's a catapult? Last stick. He put Ibrahim inside and they let him go. Can you imagine months of collecting woods, fire burning so high, and they last stick him inside in the middle. At the last very moment, Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam come up to him and ask him, do you have any last wishes? If Jibril Ask Ibrahim, do you have any last wishes? You guess what is the answer? A very short and simple one to explain the meaning of tawakkal that we are talking about. Trust. He says, not from you. Full stop. Not from you. Because Allah is with him. That is the trust. That is tawakkal. That is the trust that we are looking at. That is the trust that we are dealing with. If you talk about tawakkal, if you talk about trust, when you put your trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as high as Ibrahim, you won't be failed. Because what happened next, when they lasted him in the middle of that big plot of land where the fire is so high. Don't sing that song, huh? When the fire was so high and Ibrahim go inside in the middle of it. And that was what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruct the fire to be peace to him. To be cool to him. And he was not even a single skin or, or hair was burned except for the one that it was tying his hand. And he lives there for a few days. Just to come out from the place where he was last ticked inside. Can you imagine that? What I want to picture is, he did not care about not only human, but he did not care about the fire. He did not care about death. He did not care about pain. He did not care how he's going to fly and drop and where does... He's going to land and so on. He did not even bother a person that he considered at that point of time to be the strongest. Jibril, come up to him. What is your last wishes? Tell me. I can help you. Not from you. Not from you means from Allah. I want it from Allah. Because that is the trust I put to him. That is what you all should do. We all should do. And I'm sure that is a very big striving point. That is a big challenge that we are going through if we are looking at that kind, that spot of tawakkal. This is the kind of thing that we want. This is the kind of understanding that I want to put inside tawakkal. And that is what we can understand in the meaning of tawakkal. So, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Anbiya. بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ قُلْنَا يَا نَارُوا كُونِ بَرْدًا وَالسَّلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمِ Oh fire, be you coolness and safety for Ibrahim. So then the fire submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becoming cool and safe for Ibrahim. It only burned the bonds or the, the, the tide of hand and he sat in in the middle of the fire. And can you imagine? A tafsir, ulama a tafsir mentioned that he went out about eight days. Eight days. From the middle of that place, he went out 
safely. And of course, he shocked everybody because it's like he come out from a beautiful garden. From that big fire, he come out in the safe hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by having that tawakkal, that trust that he puts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dearest congregation, trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in us or from us must be a step-by-step -step work. It cannot happen like Ibrahim. You all can just tell me that, oh, that's some kind of prophet. That's a prophet that, you know, everybody knows. The Christian will fall on Ibrahim. The, the, the Jews will fall on Ibrahim. And that is our father. That is, whoa, Khalilullah. You know, of course, he can have that kind of thing. But it is not something impossible for us to help, to have. I'm going to give you another example. Amul Faqi Mukaddam Muhammad bin Ali Ba'alawi. He is known as a Sayyid Abdul Malik bin Alawi or Amil Faqi Mukaddam. He is the uncle of a very known or very well known scholar, lives a thousand years back in Hadramaut, Hintarim. He was the first one, among the first one to come out from Yemen, from Hadramaut, to spread Islam in the country that is called India. India. So, India, at that point of time, does not know Islam at all. Islam was not exposed to them. This is very long time back. And he was among the first one that entered India. And India at that time has well-known Hindus, not only that they preach and practice Hinduism properly, but they can also do miracles. They can make fire, they can jump high, they can fly, they can literally fly. So when Abdul Malik come and introduce Islam, talk about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spoke about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, spoke about how beautiful the religion is and so forth, they laugh at him. They laugh at him. They say, what can you do? What can you do, you Arab man? He says, we, the Hindus, we are practicing our religion and we can already fly. We can do this, we can do that. Amul Fagi Mugaddam did not practice any silat or did not practice any kind of magic. But he has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has yaqeen. He has tawakkal. Those men, he says, if you want to show something that your religion has got something, then come and meet us. We will arrange a time, a big plot of land. You do whatever you can, you and your followers. You do whatever you can, and I will do whatever I can. We see who is the best, and the best will follow the best. He said, okay. He did not, say, he did not mention anything. Abdul Malik, he did not mention anything. He just has tawakkal. Because he has no idea what's going to happen next. Like what uh, Nabi Ibrahim or Prophet Ibrahim, he did not plan for anything. He did not plan that after the last stick, he's going to fly somewhere else or anywhere else. But Allah put him there. And Allah asked the fire to remain cool and peace to Ibrahim. And that happens. So when Amal Fagi Mugadam went back and they came back again on the day when they meet, and these Hindus, they come by and they perform their miracles. They can fly, like what I mentioned. They can jump, they can do whatever. They start fire and so on. And then they say, now it's your turn. Sheikh, or whatever that he can call him, it's your turn right now. This man is the descendant of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa These men are the four generation that spread Islam throughout the world. Now, these are the Hadramis. Until in Singapore also, they are, they, they are doing that. That comes 100 years after him. When, and that, this person, this Amal Fagi Mugadam, is the one that, that comes, the, 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 the descendants of Wali Songo in Indonesia. And this descendant known as Khans today. Uh, 
I wonder if Shah Rukh Khan is one of them, but Khans. Yeah? So, they say, come, let's show what you have. Let's show what you have. Show me what you have. He did not do anything. But subhanallah, because of his tawakkal, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with his amalan, his whatever. Because of his tawakkal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him. Like what? Like how he protects Islam. Like how he hang upon his trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not do anything. But his slipper, his sandal, suddenly flat. His sandal come out from his feet and went up and slapped those people that was flying. His sandal, not himself, Allah make that miracle happen. And that sandal slapped these people and these people cannot go up back again. And you know how Hindus respect, hate and hate slippers. It's, it's a disgrace, it's a big disgrace for them. But that happens out of karama. Prophets has got mu'jizat. All prophets has got mu'jizat. All awliya, all people, all scholars, all uh, um, normal Muslims. When they are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would be the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is known as wali Allah. We have one very big one that we know of is Al-Habib Nuh bin Muhammad bin Ahmad Al-Habshi. He is a great wali. I, I, am I just saying this or you need to see this? Because when Allah loves someone, He did not want to mention who and what. He will show miracle upon who He chose. That's how Abdul Malik happens and that's how al uh, Al-Imam Habib Nuh bin Muhammad bin Ahmad al-Habshi Until today, you can see His uh, Maqbara oh, uh, His Maqbara is still there We have history that proves How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Love this man That he keeps it until today And it has been like a hundred and a few years This story that I mentioned to you Has been thousands of years 1,000 years about that. So, tawakkal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not just by mentioning of word. The two stories that I gave to you or that I relate to you has got something to do with what you yourself can practice as a Muslim in this new year. I'm sorry, I'm just going to check the time. Yeah? How much time do I have? And I have 15 minutes more. Right. In this coming year, oh, sorry, you, are, you have entered the new year. Resolution is something that we have. And putting the trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after something that you have decided is something that you want to practice against what has been um, conveyed to you today. Tonight, I want to purposely mention about tawakkal as one of the aspect or, or significant attributes in Islam or in a Muslim for you all to understand that whatever you, do, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to, 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 to make out of yourself to be a better Muslim, you need to hang on. You need to put that trust, that big trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned to you the story of Prophet Ibrahim, I can talk to you and it's endless story about all the prophets. They all have the same story. The story of tawakkal. How they put trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do justice to that, to that trust. As to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's the same thing. As to Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu wa sallam, it's the same thing. As to Prophet Idris, as to Prophet Yaqub, as to Prophet Ayub, all the stories that you can think of, they all have tawakkal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all these are for us to look at, to put into practice how we want to put our trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you want to go on to a certain aspect in life 
to make a new self or to make a something which is new for yourself, but to have tawakkal, to pin, to embed inside it tawakkal, the big word that I mentioned just now as the three aspects that uh, Abu Hassan Nashadli has mentioned to have that kind of a life aspect inside you to practice tawakkal. Again here, the story of al uh, Sheikh al Habib Ab Abdul Malik, whereby I mentioned about how he held his trust. His big work was to spread Islam to a place where there is no Islam at all. And he just know about what he has to convey to those people about Islam. He does not learn any martial art. He does not learn anything, but he has trust. He has Allah to arrange his life for him. And that's what he did. As per all the other saints, they are all ordinary human beings. If like, like what I mentioned just now, if you want to talk about Ibrahim, and that is a prophet, and all the other prophets, they have those kind of trust because they are prophets. I gave you also an example of human being, a normal human being that was not chosen to be prophets, but they are chosen to be the one that is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they have big trust. They have big tawakkal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Habib Nuh bin Muhammad bin Ahmad al-Habshi is our local scholar. Lives about 100 years back. What he did all the while about trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his own deed. To do, to share rahmah. To share love. To give things that is, that is known to have or to put in happiness in people. That's what he did. And he knows that he, when he does that, Allah will intend put love and mercy for himself. He was known to always share things to the needy, to the poor, because he was also trained by his father to do that. His father was, uh, his father works in Istana, in, in palace, where he will bring other siblings also to give food to poor. And uh, Habib Noh learns that. So when he came to Singapore, he always does that. He always give food to children, always give food to the needy. In turn, the trust that he has is when he is in that kind of trouble, Allah will help them. Allah will help him. I mean. And Allah has shown that. Upon his death, they tried to bury him in another place where he himself do not want to be in that place, but he wants to be in the present place, which is Shantan Way. Upon his death, after Ghusul, after the shower of, of Mayit, they want to carry him up, but they cannot lift his coffin. They cannot lift his coffin. Even 10 people come by and try to lift up the, the coffin. Cannot. Because in his living days, he has instructed, he has put a will to his student that he wants to be buried at Shantan Way. Subhanallah, that place belongs to Persian. That place that we know, Shantan Way, where he is buried, that plot of land is very expensive and it belongs to a Persian. And they bury Persians there. Who wants to spend for him when he himself is not that rich. But a person come forward, a person, a Muslim come forward, pay for the land and bury him there. Who does this? Who does this? Allah. Allah with his yakin, with his tawakkal, with his love to people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather these people to help in Minton. I have many more stories with regards to Habib No, but I guess time is not permissible. Well, what I'm going to come back or summarize the whole aspect of tawakkal down here is about the trust that you are supposed to build within yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us with this. And may this awal Muharram brings our heart together 
seek for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help us in our decision insha'Allah. Let us put our hand together. We will do a short dua before we end this tazkira or short tazkira I call it insha'Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa karim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Rabbana anfa'na bima alamtana. Rabbi faqihna wa faqih ahlana. Rabbana la tuzir qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. Wa hablana min ladun karahmata innaka anta al-wahab. Ya muqalib al-qulubi wal-absar. Thabit qulubana ala dinik. Allahumma arina haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'ah. Wa arina batila batilan warzuqna jtinaabah. Allahumma rabbana la tuzir qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. Wa hablana min ladun karahmata innaka anta al-wahab. Ya muqalib al-qulubi wal-absar. Thabit qulubana ala dinik. اللهم أرينا حقا حقا وارزقنا تباه وأرينا باطلا باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم لك الحمد شكرا ولك المن فضلا وأنت ربنا حقا ونحن أبيدك رقا وأنت لم تذال ذلك أهلا اللهم يا مياسر كل عصير ويا جابر كل كسير ويا صاحب كل فرد ويا مغني كل فقير ويا مقوي كل ضعيف ويا معمنا كل مخائف يسر علينا كل عصير فتيسر عصير عليك يسر اللهم يا عظيم السلطان يا قديم الإحسان يا دائم النعمة يا باسط الرزق يا كثير الخيرات يا واسع الأطاء يا دافع البلاء يا سامع الدعاء يا حاضرا ليس بغائب يا موجودا عند الشدائد يا خفي لطفي يا لطيف السنع يا حليم لا يعجل اقضي حوائجنا يا أرحم الراحمين اقضي حو وإجنا يا أكرم أكرمين اقض حوائجنا يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب إزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قبل الله منا ومنكم